عبادك الأيام فتا الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد إن شاء الله تعالى today we're going to start شرح العقيدة الواسطية لشيخ الإسلام أحمد بن عبد الحليم بن عبد السلام بن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى we're going to start the kitab Aqidatul Wasatiyah by Shaykh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. And the, inshallah ta'ala the explanation that we're going to be doing is going to be a sharhun mukhtasar. A summarized explanation. Ala al-Aqidatul Wasatiyah on this book Aqidatul Wasatiyah bi-idhnillahi al-kareem. The author of this book or the scholars who or when the scholars explain a book, before they go into the book, they do two things. The first thing that they do is they, they, they talk about the author of the book and the individual who wrote the book. And what they also do is, they also speak about the book itself. What is this book? What is it about? What does it deal with? As for the author of the book, we've already spoken about him previously. We spoke about him in the uh, sharah of our kitab or the kitab Al-Lamiyyah ibn Taymiyyah we spoke about him in the Lamiyyah so a talib ilm should go back to that book to um, see the life of the author and about him the second thing which is Aqidatul Wasatiyah is a book which the scholars they gave a lot of attention to the scholars showed a lot of Ahmiyyah, they gave it importance. And they explained it. From the scholars that explained it is a Shaykh Abdul Rahman ibn Nasir al Sa'di rahimahullah. He called the book, his explanation, Al Tambihatul Latifa, Fi Mahtawat Alayhi al Wasatiya to Minal Mabahi al Manfiya. Also, Zayd ibn Abdul Aziz ibn Fayyad. He also explained this book and he called it Al Rawdatul Nadiyatu Sharh Al Aqidatul Wasatiya. But the best sharah, the best explanation that this book has is Al Tambihatul Saniyatu Al Al Aqidatul Wasatiya. Al Tambihatu Al Sunniya, Al Tambihatul Saniyya Al Al Aqidatul Wasatiya. Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Nasir al Rashid. Abdul Aziz ibn Nasir al Rashid. His explanation is the best. Sheikh ibn Uthaymin also explained it. Rahimahullah rahmatan wa si'ah. His explanation is very good. All of those shuruh, we're going to take benefits from them. We're going to be relying on the sharh of ibn Uthaymin. We take some things from it. We're going to be relying on the sharh of Zayd ibn Abdul Aziz ibn Fayyad, the Sharah of Abdul Aziz ibn Nasir, and the Sharah of Abdul Rahman ibn Nasir al-Saudi, rahimahullah. Also, what we will be relying on and we'll be taking fawaid from and benefits is Kutub al-Tafsir, such as the Tafsir of Al Imam Muhammad ibn Ali al-Shawkani, rahimahullah, his Fatuh al-Qadir, and Tafsir of uh, Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah ta'ala. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he benefits us bi-idhnillah al with the beginning of this book he gives us the ability, he gives us the strength to finish this book insha'Allah ta'ala innahu waliyu dhalika wal qadiru alayhi Allah is the one who is able to do so. Without any further ado we'll start the book but what I want to remind you of is the kutub of Aimmat al-Sunnah, scholars of Ahl al-Sunnah, when they explain their books, they all speak about five points. And these are usul Ahl al-Sunnah. They are the foundation that a person of the Sunnah, he needs to follow Ahl al-Sunnah in, in order to be from the people of the Sunnah. And this book is going to deal with those five issues. The first one of them is, Babul Asma'i was Sifat. The names of Allah and His attributes. 
Allah's names and attributes, you follow the methodology of Ahl Sunnah. You follow the methodology of Ahl Sunnah pertaining to that. The second one is Masailu Sahaba. Masailu Sahaba, am at Tawasut of Sahaba. That the matters pertaining to the Sahabas. You follow Ahl Sunnah in regards to what they believe and what they say about Ahl Sunnah. The third one is Masailu Al Asma'i Wal Ahkam. Masailu Al Asma'i. Wal ahkam Names and rulings that come in the Sharia. Names and rulings that come in the Sharia, such as the name Iman, Kufr, Nifaq, Fisq, Bid'ah. They are placed in the right place, and the shurut, the conditions Ahl Sunnah follow, and the mawani' they observe, that the student of knowledge observes those. He observes the conditions, he observes the obstacles. Pertaining to the to the iman and kufr, he also learns that the iman, its arkan, its its kamaliyat and whatnot. I mentioned three, right? The fourth one is al qada wal qadar, the issues of qada wal qadar. What Allah has destined subhanahu wa ta'ala and the maratib al-qadr, the levels of qadr. We'll speak about that insha'Allah ta'ala. And the fifth one which is the last one, al-wa'd wal-wa'id. Warnings and promises that come in the Quran and the Sunnah. So insha'Allah ta'ala this book, Aqeedah al Ibn Taymiyyah focuses on those five. At the ending of the book insha'Allah ta'ala, after he mentions those five, the Shaykh rahimahullah, he goes into some issues of manners and etiquettes and adab. Some issues of etiquettes that he speaks about, rahimahullah, that a person needs to look after. And these are the mukammilat, these are the things that complete a person's what? A person's aqidah, to have good etiquettes. Issues of al amru bil ma'ruf and nahi anil munkar. And other than that, he brings it, rahimahullah, and he concludes with that. So those five usul is what this book is going to deal with. These five are fundamental issues that you can't oppose Ahlul Sunnah regarding it. If you do, you leave Ahlul Sunnah. So we're going to start, inshaAllah ta'ala. Qala al-musannifu, the author said, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The author, he started his book with the basmalah. He started his book with the what? With the basmala. Basmala is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Why? Iqtida'an bil kitab al-Aziz. He is, he is following the book of Allah. Because the book of Allah, it starts with the Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Surah Al-Fatiha. Not only that, but every, fi kulli suratin, in every surah of the Quran, Bismillah is started with it. Except Surah Al-Bara'a, and Surah Al-Tawbah. Also, he is imitating and he is following the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because the letters that the Prophet used to write, he used to start with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Grammatically, grammatically, we're going to analyze Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Bismillah, the ba is ba ulil isti'ana. You're seeking aid and help from Allah Tabarak wa Taala. The ba is ba ulil isti'ana. Ya, meaning we're seeking help from Allah by calling him on his name. Ism in the Arabic language is ma dalla ala musamman. Ma dalla ala musamman. It is anything that shows you something. Or it's a thing that indicates the thing that it was named after. This is called a pen. So when I say pen, it shows you the thing. That is what it's, linguistically, that's what it means. Technically, according to the grammarians, they consider it is what, The grammarians, they see the word ism as to be what? That which has a meaning in and within itself, but it does not indicate time whatsoever. It doesn't show time. Good. So we said bis, we, we explained what the ba means, we explained what the ism means. 
ده بسم الله إذا جارنا مجرور من إذا حرف جر الاسم مجرور أجار مجرور have to be attached to something ولا they attach to والجار والمجرور متعلق بمحذوف ينبغي أن يقدر متأخرا ليفيد الحصراء قاعدة أصل the jar and the majroor are both attached to something that is hidden it is also hidden but is delayed it's put after so exclusivity can come from it meaning bismillah and then whatever is hidden is put, is left is, it comes after bismillah after the jar and majroor are you with me why is it coming after the jar and the majroor the reason is becoming liyufid al hasra so it shows exclusivity. Because the qa'idah is ma. The qa'idah and the principle is. Ida quddima ma haqquhu ta'khir yufidu al-hasr. Anything that should have been delayed, if it gets put forward, it shows exclusivity. That's the qa'idah. The jar of the majurur were not meant to be forward. It was meant to be after the verb. But why is it put forward? Ya. Yeah. So it can show exclusivity. Bismillah in the name of Allah. In the name of Allah. Aktubu, I write. So in this situation right now, he's the author, he's saying Bismillah Aktubu because he is writing. He's not eating. He's not sleeping. He's not walking. He's Bismillah only a falls to that verb of writing. Bismillah in the name of Allah. Allah is what brothers? Alamun ala that al muqaddasati. The word Allah is a noun, a name that is used only for Allah. And what does it mean? It means Dul Uluhiyati wal Ubudiyati ala khalqi ajma'in. He is the one who is the Lord, the one who deserves to be worshipped, and he is the Lord over all his creation. The grammarians they discuss if the name Allah is it rooted and does it stem from a word. And the strongest of that it is that it does. And that is what Mushtaqun min alaha ya'lahu uluhatun. Which basically means abada ya'budu ibadatan. The word Allah comes from the word alaha. It's mushtaq. It's rooted from something. Fallahu ilahum bima'na ma'luhun ay ma'budun. So Allah is what? The one that is worshipped alone. And he's not associated with partners with him. That is what Allah means. And no one is allowed to take that name. It's only his name. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. So, Bismillah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim are ismani karimani min asma'i al-husna. Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim are from the noble names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Both of them, both of them, dalani ala tisafi ta'ala bin rahmati ala ma yaliku bi jalalihi. Both of them, they indicate and they are characteristics that indicate mercy, both of them. Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim, both of them show mercy. This mercy is what Allah shows towards his creation. And it befits his majesty, how he is merciful. Both of them. فالرحمن ذو الرحمة العامة لجميع المخلوقات There's two ways we can take in explaining Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim, two ways. One is that we say both of them are sifa fi'liya. The first way, so there's two ways we can explain Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. The first way we can explain it is, we say Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim, both of them are Sifa Fi'liya. So if they're both Sifa Fi'liya, then what's the difference? The difference is that Ar-Rahman is Sifa Fi'liya, but it's Am, it is general mercy. It's not exclusive to anybody. And then we say Ar-Rahim is what? It's Khasatun. Bil Mu'minina is specific to the believers. That's one way of explaining it. And the scholars, they take, some scholars, they take that. The second way to go around it is what? Yeah. To say, Ar-Rahmanu. Are you with me? Ar-Rahmanu. is sifa thatiya. And Ar-Rahimu. is sifa fi'liya. And what is, what's the difference between sifa thatiya and sifa fi'liya? We'll come to it, inshaAllah ta'ala. We'll come to it. But in simple terms, the difference between the two is Sifa Dhatiya is not connected to Allah's will, whereas Sifa Fi'liya is connected to Allah's will. He does it whenever he wills. Sifa Dhatiya la yanfakwa an, anhu subhanahu wa ta'ala, it never detaches itself from him.
سبحانه وتعالى very good then the author says الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما مزيدا After the author mentions and he said بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم he now went on to saying uh, or he went to the he went to the hamdala which is by sending praise unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he started by saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and now straight away he's going to say he's saying Alhamdu praise is Lillah is for Allah Alhamdu Lillah praise is for Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala the word Alhamdu the alif al-lam in Alhamdu is lil istighraq the word istighraq in the Arabic language yufidu shumul wal umum istighraq means what yufidu Al-umum wa-shumul. It means that word, every meaning that it can carry. Praising in all of its meanings is for Allah. That's what the Alif Alam benefits us. Some said no, it means al-jinsiyya. The Alif Alam, no, jinsiyya. They said it's jinsiyya. And the reason why they said it's jinsiyya and not istighraq because they said that the praise can be done for other than Allah. And if you make it istighraqiyya, then, if you make it istighraqi grammatically, then that means that the praise is huh, it's only for Allah and no one else can be praised. When in reality, others are praised. Naam. So that is the discussion. So, Alif, Alhamdulillahi. Alhamdulillahi. Praise is for Allah. Ay jami'ul mahamidi lillahi. All praise is for Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does Hamd mean? Hamd is... الثناء بالصفات الجميلة والأفعال الحسنة. The word الحمد linguistically, linguistically, it means what? It means praising. It, it means to praise with characteristics which are beautiful. Are you with me? That is what it means. That is what it what it means. And there is a difference between الحمد and شكر. Hamd and shukr. There is a difference between the two. Hamd is that you praise somebody for something that they have. They are. Hamd means you praise somebody for something that they are, not something that they've done for you. Are you with me? And also what they do for you. Those two. You can, Hamd means you praise somebody for something that they've done for you. And you can also praise somebody for what? For that which they haven't done for you, just that which they are. The fact that Allah owns the heavens and the earth, that's not something he's doing for you, but the fact that he owns it, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's praised for that. That's hamd. Whereas shukr, on the other hand, is only when you do something for me. I can only ashkuruka, I can only praise you. In the word ashkuruka is when you've done something for me. So from that angle, shukr and hamd, hamd has a vast meaning, bigger meaning. Are you with me? Very good. If you look at it from another i'tibar, from another angle, shukr has a bigger meaning than alhamd. When we look at where it occurs from. Hamd only occurs from the heart and the mouth. Khalas. You praise the person from beneath your heart, you actually mean it. And of course you say it with your mouth. But it can't pass that. Whereas shukr on the other hand, it is what's in your heart. You can also, uh, you can also say it and also a action is a shukr. An action of the limbs is shukr. As Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he said in the Quran, اعملوا آل داودة شكرا. So from that angle, shukr has a vast meaning than hamd and hamd. So بينهما عموم وخصوص is what the ulama say. So the sheikh said, الحمد لله, praises for Allah. الحمد لله. يهديكم الله ويسبحب لكم. So, We've taken what the word uh, Lillahi means. Allah, we've already spoken about it. <coughs> the one who sent down his messenger. The one, meaning Allah is praiseworthy. 
the one meaning Allah who sent down his messenger the word arsala means ba'atha he sent rasulahu his messenger here what is meant by the messenger here is muhammad specifically sallallahu alaihi wasallam the word rasul linguistically means man bi is the one that sent with a message technically it means wa insan dhakarun uhiya ilayhi bi shar'in wa umira bi tablighi technically what does it mean it means it's a human being Messengers were never sent down from the jinn. The, uh, the messengers were sent down from human beings. Zakarun is a male. There's no such a thing as a female. Huh? There's no such a thing as a... Ibn Hazm got it wrong here. The view that Ibn Hazm held that a woman can be a... Uh, is incorrect. Because the evidence that he used is وَأُوحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّي Musa and Ardu'i, فَإِذَا خِفْتِ عَلَيْهِ فَأَلْقِيهِ فِي الْيَمِّ وَلَا تَخَافِ See, Allah said, وَأَوْحَيْنَا, we sent revelation on Ummi Musa. So they said, here, Wahi means that she's a, is incorrect. Why? Why is it incorrect? Because Allah, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He also says that about the Naml, the bees. Allah, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He what? He sent revelation on them. The word revelation here means ilham. When Allah guides them to do something correct. Okay? Very good. And he was ordered to convey it. He was ordered. He's given a legislation and he was ordered to convey it. That is what a messenger is. Bil Huda. Praises to them. Alladhi arsala rasulahu. He sent down his messenger. Bil huda. With guidance. Huda brothers means what? Huda brothers means. It means. Al ilmu nafi'. Beneficial knowledge. Al huda means beneficial knowledge. And it is basically everything. That. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Came with. In terms of. News that he told us. And all the commands and the prohibitions. All of that is, that is beneficial knowledge. Guidance, brothers, is two types. Well, huda naw'an. Guidance is two types. The first type of guidance is huda bima'ana dalalati wal bayan. The guidance that means uh, to show the path and to bring the people to the path. This is type of guidance. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he said it in the Quran, وَأَمَّا ثَمُودُ فَهَدَيْنَاهُمْ فَاسْتَحَبُّوا الْعَمَى عَلَى الْهُدَى If you look at this ayah, if you don't understand the difference between the two types of guidance, you may lose and you may slip here. You see, the Qur'an, my brothers and sisters, is not, it's not a, an academic book that you go to a library and you pick it up and then you just read it and choose a chapter randomly. And you just take it out like that. The Quran requires a, many sciences to be in place before you can even be able to understand what the Quran is trying to tell you. You see? And one of these verses are from those verses that require that type of understanding. And this is an example. Allah says in this ayah, وَأَمَّا ثَمُودُ As for the people Thamud. The people of Thamud. Allah says, فَهَدَيْنَاهُمْ We guided them. But they gave preference and they started to start to like to be blind from guidance. That's what they wanted. So if Allah guided them, then how did they end up in the hellfire? And how are they disbelievers then? The guidance here doesn't mean to bring them to the path, straight path. Sorry, it doesn't mean to place a haq in their hearts. What it means is that Allah showed them the straight path. That's the first type. It is the one that, that was affirmed for the Prophet as well. وَإِنَّكَ لَتَهْدِي وَإِنَّكَ لَتَهْدِي إِلَىٰ صِرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Are you with me? وَإِنَّكَ لَتَهْدِي إِلَىٰ صِرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ And verily you guide to the straight path. This one was affirmed for him صلى الله عليه وسلم. There's another type of guidance. This type, the second type of guidance is the one Allah only does. And no one else can do this other than him. This is هُدَى بِمَعْنَ التَّوْفِيقِ وَالْإِلْهَامِ it is actually to place the haq in the person's heart. To make them accept the truth. 
And this is negated from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa This one, huwa al-manfiyu anil rasul. This is negated from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa la yaqdiru, wa la yaqdiru alayhi illa Allah ta'ala. And no one is able to do this one except Allah. As he said in the ayah, إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ Muhammad, you can't guide whoever you want. You can't. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he guides whoever he. So based on that, what do we know? That the guidance that was affirmed for him and the guidance that was negated from him, we need to know that there are two different types of guidance. So after the Sheikh brought this one, he said, Alhamdulillah, الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى Then he said, وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ the deen al-haq, brothers, is what? Al-amal al-salih, righteous actions. Al-amal al-salih, righteous actions. The word, brothers, deen, the word deen, is from those words that have so many meanings. Just like the word ta'ah, obedience, and the word hukum. If you look at the Quran and the Sunnah, and you follow its meanings, there's a lot of meanings. Ahmed Shakir, well-known muhaddith, Ahmed Shakir, his brother, Mahmoud Muhammad Shakir, who's the brother of Ahmed Shakir, he has a book called Abatil wa Asmar, where he basically talks about historical words that came from the pre-Islamic time, and those words were used, but they had so many meanings, so many meanings. And wallahi, Ahmed Shakir, as he's a muhaddith, Ahmed Shakir, his brother was an adib, Literature, he was at the pinnacle, Lugawi, something else. And he was also a historian. A historian. So, a talib of ilm, a student of knowledge, huh? he should look into the works of uh, Sheikh Mahmoud Muhammad Shakir, the brother of Ahmad Shakir. Uh, so, the Sheikh, he brought, Alhamdulillah, 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 he brought, why did Allah send down the Prophet ﷺ with guidance and, the, and deen al-haq? لِيُظْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ مَا مَعْنَى لِيُظْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ It means لِيُعْلِيَهُ To make it superior عَلَى جَمِيعِ الْأَدْيَانِ all, of, all, all the religions To give it superiority above all religions بِالْحُجَّةِ وَالْبَيَانِ وَالْجِهَادِ But how is it going to be above all, the, all religions? It's going to be above all religions by way of proof you bring out the proofs and you bring it out there. This religion is a religion that has to be above all religions. It is by way of proof. It is also by way of clarity, bayan. And it's also by way of jihad. By way of what? Jihad, fighting with the disbelievers and enemies of Allah. It happens in all those forms and all those ways. Until what? Until this religion, it becomes apparent and it, becomes, it prevails over all religions. And that is how Islam spread. It spread by those. Proofs, clarity and jihad. All of them were working together. And then the Sheikh said, وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا Allah is sufficient. Sufficient, subhanahu wa ta'ala. In witness. But what does he mean here, witness? That the Prophet is a messenger from Allah. Annahu Rasulu. And you know, brothers, these verses are the verses that give Tumanina to Qalb. Even if the people turn you down, even if the people turn away from you, even if the people disbelieve in you, even if the people question you, what is enough for you is what? Wakafa billahi shahida. Wakafa billahi shahida. It is enough that Allah is your witness. It is enough. That you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who testifies to this. That the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah is his witness that he's a messenger. You see? And Allah wa ta'ala is also what? Allah is overlooking the actions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He's observing him. And not only that, wa ala a'da'ihi, and that Allah is giving victory to the messenger over his enemy. Allah is the one. He's sufficient for you, Muhammad. Don't worry. Everyone can let you down. I'm here for you. You see, and this Ikhwani brothers and sisters is a dalalatun qati'a, a clear-cut evidence ala sidqi hadha rasuli that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was truthful. Because if he was lying and he was making up these things, 
that Allah have given him victory. When Allah have aided him and supported him. No, rather Allah would have destroyed him. As he said in Surah Al-Haqqah, وَلَوْ تَقَوَّلَ عَلَيْنَا بَعْضَ الْأَقَاوِيلِ وَلَوْ تَقَوَّلَ عَلَيْنَا بَعْضَ الْأَقَاوِيلِ Muhammad, if you made up some statements against us, not a lot, but just some, بعض الأقاويل, some statements, if you just made it up and added it to the Quran, verses here, and threw it in, لَأَخَذْنَاهُ مِنْهُ بِالْيَمِينَ We would have grabbed you with our right hand. ثُمَّ لَقَطَعْنَا مِنْهُ الْوَتِينَ And we will cut your jugular vein out of you. We will destroy you, kill you, if you do that. So this ayah, هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُظْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ Shahidat. This is, is an ayah or evidence to show that the Prophet وسلم, he was truthful and he never lied. And that's why Allah did not do that to him. Allah spread this religion for him. Allah gave him the upper hand over his enemies. At a the time they put him low. They criticized, criticized him and his household. They didn't just leave him, but they moved on to his wife as well. And they called her a zaniya. They said she committed zina. And it never came across in the life of the Messenger وسلم, a day worse than that. Never. Never came a day like that to him. والسلام, where his own wife is accused of zina. You can imagine the, how it is. And subhanAllah, this, the issue reached some of the Sahabas. And they actually thought that it was correct. Some Sahabas were jilla, noble, who carried it on. They, stole, they mentioned the story. رضي الله تعالى عنه, may Allah be, be pleased with all of them. So this, my brothers, means that everything Allah wa ta'ala is the one who gives what? Victory. And he's going to protect his religion. He's going to. You just have to come with what? You just have to put the effort down. You just have to do what? You just put the effort forward. وَأَشْهَدُ I testify to. أَلَّا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ مَا مَعَنَا وَأَشْهَدُ It means وَأُقِرُّ وَأَعْتَرِفُ I testify. أَلَّا مَعْبُودَ بِحَقٍ إِلَّا اللَّهِ That there is none worthy of worship except Allah تبارك وتعالى. That's what I testify to. وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهَ Again, it is what? It is a تأكيد لما تضمنته شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله من النفي والإثبات What was, what was already mentioned is just emphasizing on that وحده لا شريك له Is what? إلا الله أن وحده إلا الله أن وحده Are strengthening each other لا إلهنا يلا شريك لنا تأكيد Emphasizing on it which is what, what, that which was already being said. So the nafi and the ithbat, both of them that were in it, because those, the, those are the two pillars in which the shahadatain stands on. Both of them have been emphasized with wahdahu la sharika la. So the wahdahu, as I said, is a ta'kidun lil ithbat. La sharika lahna is what? Ta'kidun lil nafi. It's an emphasis for the negation. The shaykh went on to say, iqraran bihi wa tawheeda. Iqraran, bihi wa tawheed, and both of them are mazdar, verbal noun. Iqraran is a mazdar. Tawheedan is what? Wahada yuwahidu tawheedan is a mazdar. So, what are they both also doing here right now? The shaykh was also emphasizing what he mentioned again. Are you with me? It's also naam. So the Shaykh is trying to say my Tawheed is Ikhlas, sincerity fi kulli ibadatin, in all of my ibadah, whether it's qawliyyatun, statements that I say, or fi'liyyatun, an action which I do, or i'tiqadiyyah, or a belief that I have, all of them are sincerely for the sake of Allah. Wa ashhadu and I also testify. Uqirru bi lisani, wa a'taqidu bi qalbi. I testify with my mouth and my tongue, and I also believe in my heart, which is what? Anna Muhammadan, that Prophet Muhammad, eh, Abduhu wa Rasuluhu that he is his slave and his messenger. And when he says he's his slave and his messenger, this is what the Prophet is. And I want you to learn all this point, which is very important. Our Prophet Muhammad, he's not reached uluhiyah. He has not, he's not ilah. So he's below that. So he's an abd, he's a slave. And he's not an ordinary slave. So he's a Rasul. So he's at that level. If you try to put him lower than that level, it's disbelief. 
If you put him above that level, now, it is disbelief. Both are dis- disbelief. If you put him below a Rasul, you're a Kafir. If you put him above a slave, now, you're a Kafir. And that's what he meant, alayhi salatu was salam. La taturuni, don't go overboard with me. Kama atarat nasara Isa ibn Maryam. Don't take me overboard like the Christians took Isa ibn Maryam above his. Don't do that to me. I'm a slave. That's my level. Don't take me above that. And he's also a messenger. Don't take him below his level. Don't take him below his. The Christians, what did they do to Isa ibn Maryam? They took him above his normal status, being a slave. Sah? Didn't they do that? What did they become because of that? Kuffar. What did the Jews do to Isa ibn Maryam? They put him lower than his level. And they said he's not even a messenger, he's nothing. Are you with me? So they were both disbelievers. So our messenger, وسلم, we have groups that do that today. We have a group that what? Who has taken him above his status. They say he knows all the everything. He knows everything. All the unseen. He knows everything. They're not Muslims. They're kuffar. They're not what? They're not Muslims. They're kuffar. Because Allah wa ta'ala, he says, Alimul ghaybi. Allah is the one who knows the unseen. Allah is the one who knows the unseen. Alimul ghaybi fala ala ghaybi ahadan. And he doesn't make it apparent to anyone from his creation. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's unseen. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm-hmm. So those, that saves a person from what? al ifrat wa tafrid Do not go extreme both ways. al ifrat wa tafrid To go short or above the status of his sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then the Shaykh said, وَأَشَدْ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ sallallahu alayhi The word as-salatu lughatan the word salah, linguistically, it means what? It means a dua What does it mean here, technically? Or what would we mean it here right now that we're speaking? When we say Allah sends salutation on the messenger, what it means is that, that which Bukhari narrated in his sahih. And you can't just say Bukhari narrated and just leave it like that. But what you have to say is Rawahu al-Bukhari mu'allaqan Bukhari narrated it with mu'allaq But like he narrated it with what? Bisirati al-Jazm And Bukhari brought it in Kitabu Tafsir He brought it in Kitabu Tafsir In the state, in the, in the ayah which what? Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-Nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi وسلموا تسليم وسلموا تسليما من ذا آية إمام البخاري رحمه الله after he brought it in that chapter so كتاب التفسير and then he put this باب he put the قول of أبي أبو عالية he said عن أبي عالية sorry عن أبي عالية أبي عالية رضي الله تعالى عنه said صلاة الله على رسوله ثناؤه عليه في الملأ الأعلى the salah from Allah wa ta'ala means sana'uhu praising him fil mala'il a'la in the, in the gathering of his, his angels. Allah praises the Prophet sallallahu in the gatherings of his angels. He's praising him. That is what it means. Very good. Wa ala alihi and his family.